Hello, Bruce here. Today I'm going to talk about a 12 volt refrigerator, the Alpacool CX30. I'm going to try to make this as detailed of a video as I can without making it incredibly long and drawn out. I'm going to try to just stick to the point and uh, talk about the refrigerator and what I think about it at the end. Here's a look at the Alpacool CX30. I've had this refrigerator for six months and I purchased it off of Amazon for $339. Now this is not my first 12 volt refrigerator. This is actually the second one I've owned. I also have a Dometic CF50. So I do have a little bit of experience to compare the two. I've had the uh, Dometic for about four years now. Six months on this one and we just used it on our recent trip to Arizona. And the reason that I purchased this uh, second refrigerator is because of the size. This is a 30 quart and the other one is a 50 quart. The reason that I got the smaller one is because I had to uh, have a smaller sized refrigerator to fit it in the uh, 12 volt refrigerator cargo box that I built for it. I'll put a link in the description or a tag at the end so that uh, a card at the end so that you can watch those videos if you're curious as to how I put that whole setup together. First impressions, I mean it's a good looking refrigerator. It's kind of handy. It has a uh, this particular one has a carrying handle and wheels that are attached to it. And then it's kind of like a luggage rack. It has this handle, extendable handle. That goes up two, two feet or so, two and a half feet, so that you can wheel this around and not have to carry it. Let me talk about a few of the specifics. So it's a 32 quart or 30 liter. I paid $339. I've seen it for sale or on sale on Amazon for $319. It's 12 or 24 volt and it can also be used with 110 or 240 volt. It uh, takes 10 to 15 minutes, pulls about four amps. We're gonna do an actual test on a trimetric battery monitor and I'll give you uh, real time what it pulls as far as amps go in this video. It can hold 33 cans of cola I'll go through all the settings in detail and show you, walk you through those. It has some hidden power settings or so-called hidden power settings that are not included in the instruction manual and I'll go through those in detail as well. The dimensions of the cooler, it's 14.4 inches in height. It is 14.9 inches in depth. Front to back including the handle and the length from side to side is 23.1 inches. The door opens just in this one orientation. It kind of has a little bit of a, a rubber seal around it that seals along this raised rim here. It's fairly deep. I've got a couple of thermometers in there. It has a drain plug. You can pull that out if you have water or something in there. And then it actually goes underneath where the uh, compressor is mounted underneath this shelf. So it goes kind of back in there quite a ways. So you can get quite a bit of food, quite a bit of gear inside this refrigerator. I was impressed with its capacity. Of course, that's going to be highly dependent upon your needs and how much food you intend to carry in it. The beauty is you don't have to carry any ice. It has vents cut on this plastic case on the back, back here on this side and on the front and that helps run air through there to keep the compressor cool when it runs. So make sure that wherever you store it when it's running that it's clear so you can get good ventilation for that compressor. Here's where your plug connects and then here's the control panel up here on the top. Not real thrilled with the display, I'll show it to you here shortly. It, uh, it's red and uh, in bright sunlight it can be a little bit difficult to, to read but 
I mean, it works. Here's what comes with the refrigerator. An owner's manual, and this is not specific to just the CX-30. This covers a lot, several different models. It's fairly vague in general, but it does give you some of the settings, just, just the standard settings, and a little bit of information about the refrigerator. And this is the adapter to use it with 120 or 240. It's basically just like a computer power supply. Plug it into the wall, and then this plugs into the refrigerator. And so if you want to plug it in and use it in your garage or at your house or something, you can use this. And then here's your plug, and it has a generous amount of cord. I don't know what the length is, but it's probably about 10 feet, it'd be my guess. I'm going to go into this cord here in this video next, and uh, I'm real curious to know if there is a fuse inside this plug. Because a lot of people, if you look through the reviews on this refrigerator, there's been a lot of either really good reviews or some bad reviews and complaints. And some people say the refrigerator just stopped working, and I'm wondering if maybe that's because there's a fuse inside this that blew, but they didn't know it. So let's go into that and we'll find out if there is a fuse inside this plug. And that's what we have inside. I do not, do not see a fuse inside here. Sometimes in the end of this plug, it'll have a small fuse. There is not that I can see there's not a fuse inside all right so that debunks that theory let me uh, shut the camera off put this back together and then we're gonna plug it in and start looking at some of the settings so for this next part of the video the test to see how much power it draws here's how I've got this set up I have a thermometer inside the refrigerator it's showing about 63 or 64 degrees right now inside the refrigerator so we'll put that in there and close it I have my phone set up here with the timer so you can see the timer and the temperature at the same time and then I've got it plugged into my 12 volt battery bank I've got two 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries in parallel there and then the trimetric monitor so this is going through a shunt and it's going to measure amps so I'm going to reach down as I hold the camera up here on this monitor and we're going to find out how many amps it pulls when I first turn it on and then I'm going to start the timer and we're going to see how long it takes to get down to temperature I have it set right now for 34 degrees and it was 64 degrees, 63 degrees inside the refrigerator. So let's turn it on and we'll see what the initial amp draw is as I first turn the refrigerator on. If I can reach it at the same time. Okay, just turned it on. So it looks like it's peaked out at 3.7 amps and then that should sh sh slowly draw down as the compressor gets going 3.2 so 3.7 to start I think their advertised amp draw is 4 amps so that's that's pretty close just a little bit better than what they advertise it at so let's go back down and look at the temperature. Now I'm going to put this other camera on a, up in the window. I don't know how I'll put the video together. But anyway, so you can see the timer. Let's start it. It's showing 57 degrees inside the refrigerator at the moment. So my thermometer is a little bit off six or seven degrees 
five degrees. All right, there goes the timer. I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit here for 20 minutes, but uh, I'm curious to see how long it'll take it to get down to 34 degrees. Let's go back one more time before I speed it up and let's look and see where we're at. It's drawing 2.7 amps right now. All right, let's speed this up and uh, we'll come back when it shuts off. The refrigerator just shut off as it started getting down there closer to the temperature that it was set for which is 34 degrees it started going really quickly and now it's surpassed that it's showing 28 degrees 27 so it went quite a ways past that was about seven minutes and uh, the whole time this was hovering right around 2.6 to 2.8 amps while the refrigerator was running. Let's look inside and see what our thermometer shows now. 60 degrees, 58 degrees. So I don't think that my thermometers are that accurate. That's showing 60. It feels cool in there. I don't know if it feels 26 degrees. Interesting. But I have it set for 34, and that's one thing I noticed about the refrigerator. There is in the secret settings, or the hidden settings, a feature that I'll, I'll talk about here right now, where you can adjust this to calibrate it so that this reads exactly what it reads inside the refrigerator. I have not adjusted mine. It's set at factory settings. Let's go through the settings here while we're looking at it. So you have the power button on and off. Just hit the button and it turns on. When you hit the set button, you can go to echo mode, which is what I have it in right now, economy, or you can go to max. Max is it will cool down the quickest from an initial cool down. I just have mine on echo all the time. And then your temperature settings up and down. If you press it once, it shows you what you have it set for and blinks, and then it goes back to what it shows inside. And then if you continue to press, then you can set it for whatever temperature you want. To access the hidden settings, you start with the refrigerator off, press and hold the set button for three to five seconds, and then the menu will come up. It's going to give you E1 through E9. Well, there's only one that I use, which is E5, so I can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. The rest of them, I'll tell you what they are. I'll put a list in the description, but I have kept them all just at the factory settings. So just press and hold the set button three to five seconds and then it will come up. So one, and you scroll through like that, there's E5 and press the up or down buttons and you have to go quickly because it only stays in that setting for a couple of seconds. So set it on Celsius or Fahrenheit, whichever you choose and then leave it alone and when it shuts off it'll be set at wherever you had it uh, last. So you can scroll through E1 through E9. E1 is lowest temperature setting, two is highest temperature setting, three is temperature return setting, four is soft start, five was the Fahrenheit to Celsius, six, seven, and eight are adjustments for temperature compensation if you wanna calibrate 
the screen with what's actually going on inside the refrigerator. Uh, that would be your choice and that's where you can adjust that. I think it's a fantastic refrigerator. We used it for six months, not continuously. We did have it running for about a month continuously without any issues. Every time I turn it on, it comes on and works. And so far, it's been a fantastic refrigerator for the money. I wouldn't hesitate to buy another one, half the price or less than half the price of the Dometic CF50. They have a lot of different models to choose from. Pick the one that works the best for you and uh, as far as size is com concerned. It's been a fantastic refrigerator for me and it's uh, been well worth uh, $340 or 339 that I paid for it. So, If you liked the video and it helped you out, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to put a link in the description for this refrigerator. It's my Amazon affiliate link. And if you happen to buy a refrigerator using that link, I'll get a small commission from Amazon. It won't cost you any more, but it'll help me out and help out the channel. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section. Or just give a general comment that could help out somebody else that happens to watch the video. And hopefully this will help you out. And we'll see you guys on the next video.